It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. Today I'm taking a look at a small card game called Pocket Madness. Pocket Madness here is from designers Bruno Catala and Ludovic Montblanc, two of my favorite designers. I was very excited when I heard they were coming out with this, a Cthulhu game. I was less excited when I heard it was basically a rummy game, you know, very, pretty much rummy with a Cthulhu theme. I was again excited when I saw the artwork. It's unbelievably adorable. I love it. So it's a game that's kept me a little bit on a roller coaster. Now, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the game, and I'll tell you if I, uh, where it ended up in that roller coaster. Do I like it? Did I not like it? Let's find out what I thought right after this. To set up the game, we're going to give two cards from the deck of cards to every player. In this case, I have one, two, three players here. We are going to take the deck of cards, remove 17 cards from them, keep those face down, but then turn the entirety of the rest of the deck face up, shuffle it all together, and then splay it out like this on the table so most cards will be face up. You're also going to make a little pool of the sanity or insanity cubes there. And then somewhere on the table you'll have these spread out. These are the old ones, and I'm just going to leave them in a little stack over here for now. I'll show you what these do in a sec. So the objective of the game is to, um, when someone goes mad, when someone goes insane and they go over 10 of these cubes, at the end of that round you want to be the one with the least uh, amount of these cubes. So the most sane and you win the game. Now on your turn, you are going to do one of three things. You are going to keep investigating, which is drawing cards here. You are going to... Uh, open portals or you are going to publish your research. Now these are all fancy ways of basically saying draw cards or play sets of three or more of the same kind of card or the publishing is just basically playing a run. A run of all the cards, one of each, 6 through 12, which is what all the different card numbers in the game are. Now those numbers also mean that there are that many in the deck, so be aware of that. So, how does playing cards work, and what does it mean to give the other players sanity, how to, uh, insanity, how do we do that? Okay, here it goes. On your turn, you are going to, let's say, uh, I could draw from the pile. I can take one, two, or three. If they're face up, great, I know what I'm getting. If not, then I might have to risk it and see what I get. So one, two, or three, all right? So in this case, let's say I take three cards. I get that 9, that 12, and that other 12, and I'm going to put those in my hand. Now the reason I do that, or I did that specific move, is because I already had one 12 in my hand. And when it comes back around to me, I can choose to, if I want to, I can play three or more of the same kind to open a portal, and I could even do this on my turn up to three times, okay? So I could have played three 12s and three 9s and four 10s. Okay? So three or more. And as soon as I do that, I'm going to open the portal to that that matches, and I get the matching old one over here. Now, the 12 here, the power is just pass your turn, so not do anything. But I'm going to put it over here for now in front of me, and then whenever I want to on one of my turns, even this one, I could put one of these back in the pool to do the power on them. And the powers on them vary, but they're basically... Various ways of card manipulation typically. Take cards from people, give cards, play another turn, things like that is what they usually do, okay? So that's the way, that's one way to get rid of cards. Once I do this, I open a gate, I get that ancient one, I keep it till I want to use it, that old one. If somebody else then later on plays, let's say this player over here plays three twelves on their turn, and I still have this old one in front of me, well, they would take it in that case, okay? I never got to use it, and uh, once I've done, you know, that would be that would have been two rounds, okay? The third option, the last option there is playing a run, playing 6 through 12, one of each. If I do that, the first person to do that in a round, which is one run through the entirety of the deck, is going to give all the other players one madness. So let's say I do it, I'm going to give this player one madness, and I'm going to give that player one madness. 
If during the same round, this player over here runs, uh, plays a set, a run, well, they are going to give everyone two madness, and so this player would get two madness, and I would be given two madness, and so on. It always goes up by one during the same round, which again is one run through the entire deck. Once we have run out the whole deck, everybody gets one more go to play sets again. You can only play uh, trips or more, so you can only play this kind of set or runs, okay? You cannot do both of them the same, during the same round. But once that's done, then everybody's going to take a look at the cards they have in their, left in their hand. And for every different kind of card, so for every number, you are also going to get one Madness. So if I ended the game right now, I have a 9, I have a 10, 2 Madness. If I had another 10, that is still only 2 Madness, okay? And then we shuffle up, we deal out, we do it again. Unless, at the end of that very round, someone already had 10 or more Madness, in which case... Uh, the game's over and whoever has the least amount of that madness is the winner of the game, all right? So it's basically it. You are going to pretty much be able to see what is coming up for the most part on your turn. Oh, look at that, 211. So this player might take just the 11 there. They're going to be able to go out, which is very nice. If you are able to go out, by the way, you would then be able to get rid of half your madness while giving the other players some. So that's another thing to shoot for during the round here, the running of the deck. But typically you'll play two rounds, meaning you'll shuffle up the deck and prep, prepare it and get players cards twice in the game, and that usually is the, uh, the length of the game. Least amount of madness is the winner of Pocket Madness. So here are the cards you can gain the use of as you play three or more of the same kind. I already showed you the number 12 there. Here you have the 11, which is going to force the players to play a single card whenever you choose to trigger him. This one allows you to take the card of your choice from anywhere in the deck. Immediately take another full turn. Take the card of your choice from an opponent's hand. Discard a random card from each opponent's hand. And then this one, which can be very powerful, is distribute one or two of your cards between one or two players. So get rid of some cards before the end of the game comes up. Boom. You are now taking less madness. Just wanted to give you a closer uh, look at those. And that's pretty much it. Let's go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts. So as you can see, a pretty straightforward game with, yeah, a couple of small wrinkles in there to keep it all interesting. I, I like the game. It's not one that wowed me, but it is one that I could see playing with a lot of folks. It's, a, it's an easy game to grasp. Everything makes sense. I enjoy the, um, I like the cadence of it for the most part. I do have one thing I want to come back to that I, that I thought was a little bit weird. But the game has a lot of tension with when the deck is going to run out. You know, I've played some card games, especially recently, that really missed the mark when it came to that. There was just no tension there that the deck was going to run out before you were ready for it to run out. And this game gets that right. I like that a lot. You don't want to be holding cards when that deck runs out. And the more you draw, because you typically have to draw, you get keep getting different cards, and that starts to worry you. But wait, hold on, I'm only two cards away from getting the whole run, so maybe I should keep looking for that. Oh, there's a face-down card. Maybe that's the one I need. I like that balance and that tension of everything going on in it. Now, as I said, it's not a mind-blowing game. It's okay. It's, it's very rummy-like, and so if you really, really love rummy then I think you're going to enjoy this. I like Rummy okay. I guess I was just hoping for something else, something a little bit more um, outside of the box, maybe. A couple of things I don't like in the game. The um, There's a weird cadence to each round with the whole you play a run, you publish your work or whatever, and then everybody gets one madness, but then you do it again in the same round, anybody, and they give out two madness, and then three, and then four, and that's cool. I like the idea of that, but for some reason, it seems that it's not, as soon as someone goes over 10 Madness, the game's not automatically over. It has to be at the end of the round, and I keep playing and running out of those Madness cubes. I've seen it in one game I played. There were five of those sets played in the same hand. That, that means by the last one, I was playing four people, they were giving out 15 of those cubes. 
to the other three players, five, five, and five. And that's just, there just weren't that many. So the winning player in that game had 12 madness. That was the winning player. They had gone over the threshold to even trigger the end of the game. So that seems a little weird, you know, the, the cube count in the box seems off, or that just, I don't know, that just doesn't seem right to me. That's one of the big ones that sort of I find a little iffy. Everything else, for the most part, I enjoy. It's just um, not something that, it, that I keep thinking about or anything, you know. It's one that I, I enjoy. I'm going to be hanging on to it, I think. If I, if I get into a situation where I want to throw down some cards, play a little rummy, I could choose this over just playing with a regular deck of cards. But other than that, not necessarily something spectacular. A good game, one I do recommend, but you have to know that you're the audience for this. You know, don't just uh, go into it thinking, ooh, Cthulhu game, or ooh, a Bruno Catala game, you know. Uh, this is very simple. It's, it's, a slight, uh, it's a slight game. It's a small game. And so going into it with that mentality, I think you're going to be set. I like it. Love the artwork. I like the theme, though it's basically pasted on. I like being able to get those uh, Elder Gods and then utilizing them for their little boost. Though, again, those are pretty small things. But great, great feel to running that deck out, seeing what you're grabbing, you know, what you are taking. It's mostly face up, so I like that. And just not hanging on to those cards, getting rid of those cards. So good vibe to this one. Check it out, folks. Pocket Madness. I like it. I'm going to hang on to it. I think you should look into it, too. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.